Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Tableau Bridge on your computer. Now, typically you should actually be setting this up in a slightly more reliable place, but seeing as this is a YouTube video, I just thought I'd show you how to set it up on your laptop. Now, you'd follow the same instructions to set it up on any computer, whether that's a service-based computer or a computer that's virtual. Essentially, what Tableau Bridge lets you do is connect your on-premise data to Tableau Online. Because typically, if you have a Tableau server, it's held inside of your own environment, so the physical machine is actually in your data center. Whereas with Tableau Online, the data center is actually in the cloud. In Tableau's case, it's AWS. And so you need Tableau Bridge as a mechanism for getting your data from your on-premises infrastructure to the cloud. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up and show you how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the download Tableau Bridge option. This takes you to this page. Tableau Bridge is typically updated in step with all the other releases of Tableau. Now it's typically a good idea to keep it in sync with a version of online that you're currently using to make sure that they're using the same capabilities. And also make sure you don't experience any bugs between the two versions. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded the latest version of uh, Tableau Bridge and it's already on my desktop. You can go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna now minimize the browser and we'll jump to my desktop. So here's Tableau Bridge on my desktop. It's just a simple installer. And when you double click it, it pretty much runs like a typical Tableau desktop install. I'm just going to go ahead and click that I have read the terms and conditions. I don't think many people actually do, um, but maybe leave this to the procurement team to do this. Go ahead and click the install button. You'll obviously get this alert. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? It does need a level of admin rights because what it's going to be doing is basically communicating with Tableau Online and it needs specific capabilities in order to do that. So you do need to give it this permission. Okay, once you've installed this, um, we'll go ahead and, and, and look at how it works. Okay, great. Uh, it's pretty much running the installation. It's nearly finished and we just need to click this alert one more time. And that should be the service installed. When you've installed it, you will get this pop-up window here, which basically says sign into Tableau Bridge. You might get an error briefly before this. Just click OK or restart the service and it will run. Now, this is not a desktop application. If I actually take my mouse here, you'll see that it's actually on the bottom here. You can just see a little icon here that uh, is basically Tableau Bridge um, uh, set up here in my toolbar. And it's got two options. You can either run it as an application, which is what it's doing now, or as a service, which basically means that as soon as your computer switches on, it's able to run ahead and go and do the things it needs to do, even if you're not necessarily logged into your machine. So as long as the computer's on, it's able to carry out the tasks it needs to. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with my Tableau Online. Okay, we've installed Tableau Bridge and it's now running on our computer. We know this because if we take our cursor and just go down to the bottom, we can see the toolbar there that it's connected. And it's actually connected to our Tableau online instance. You can just see that here, okay? But of course, there's no linked data sources found. So essentially what this is saying is that Tableau Bridge as a client is not basically set up to push any data sources. So you might ask, well, how do we set this up? How do we get some data sources updating on Tableau online? Okay, to do this, I'm gonna open up Tableau desktop. Let's just go ahead and open it up and Let's just open 2020.3 here on my Windows machine. And in order to show you this working, what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna to connect to the saved data source. The reason is, is this saved data source here, Sample Superstore, actually connects to an Excel file. So it's a really good test case for how we should be using Tableau Online to push data sources up to Tableau Online. So, Let's go ahead and create an extract of this data source. Uh, just go ahead, select the extract, click extract, and this will take very little time because essentially uh, this is a very small file, so it shouldn't take long at all. There you go, it's done. And now that it's done that, uh, I'm just gonna right click and I'm going to publish this to the server, okay? And I'm gonna select Tableau Online. And you pretty much go through the step as you normally would. So you just need to enter your username and password. And then once you get up the interface for publishing the, the data source, there's actually not much different to select. It's exactly the same as you probably would for any Tableau Online data source. Let's just wait for this to load before we carry on. Here we go. 
I'm going to push it up to the default project. I'm going to call it Superstore. Uh, same as the project for the in terms of permissions. And you can see here, there's a little bit of text about Tableau Bridge required for on-premises data, which this Excel file is. So let's go ahead and click Publish. And as this uh, goes up to server, it will open up this window. Now that it's opened up this window, this is where we actually set up our refresh schedule for Tableau Bridge. Let's wait for this to load. And one of the things you'll see is the ability to schedule an extract refresh, okay? And if we go ahead and look at that, you'll see that I actually have two tabs. One that says recommended and one that says bridge legacy, okay? Now in bridge legacy, what I can actually do is I can actually select the computer that's going to be updating this file, which in this case is my virtual machine, this one. So if I select that, uh, I can pick a schedule. I can say every week at five, um, on every single day, or I could just say daily, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at a particular time. Uh, this is probably uh, a wise idea to pick a time where your uh, computer is going to be on because it will need to be on. If it's not on, the extract refresh will fail and schedule the refresh. Okay. Now, when we do that, you see there's two uh, notifications at the top. These are called toasts uh, in the web design. So see a green one saying the extract will be refreshed and the blue one. And now this one's going to disappear. And now if we actually go back to Tableau Bridge on our actual machine, you'll see that it's loading the data sources. And if you just give it a second, you'll see that Superstore is now there. So now Tableau Bridge is essentially communicating with my laptop to make sure the data source is up to date. I can do a couple of things here. I can obviously edit uh, the connection. I can schedule uh, the source from here. All these do is they essentially open up Tableau online and take me directly to this data source. So it's not like you're doing it inside of the window here. You're actually being sent off to Tableau online to finish the setting. If I go to the extract refreshes tab, you will see that this is the schedule that I picked um, when I set up this extract refresh, okay? And the other thing is I can also, I can obviously go ahead and trigger this refresh, okay? But I'm gonna show you how to trigger that from Tableau Bridge itself. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that Tableau Bridge itself is sort of on by default, but what you do need to do as an admin, is you need to go to the specific settings for the site because it's not always on, okay? If I go to the bridge option here in the third tab, you need to make sure that you pay attention as an admin to these settings here. There's a little bit of documentation on, on there's a little bit of documentation on the Tableau website that talks about this. But here you can clearly see that this is my computer. It's uh, got my name on it because I'm the owner. Um, you can actually pull multiple Tableau online clients. Let's say you have three or four people with various access to different things. You can actually use them as like a distributed load balance uh, setup that basically allows you to use multiple um, uh, configurations to pull the resources a little bit, okay? Now, the other thing is um, you've obviously got the version of the Tableau Bridge client that I'm using. So as an admin, you can see if I'm actually keeping things up to date. Um, and in a typical setup, you'd actually push an update to the machine running this that it had the most rate, the most recent client. The other thing is you can see it's connected. And the last time it was connected was 10, 17 p.m., which is basically two minutes ago when I set this up. So if I now go back, I'm just gonna go back a several steps. I wanna go back to my data source. One thing you'll see here is that the last update was at 10.15 p.m., okay? It's now 10.20 p.m. So let's say I want to trigger a refresh manually from my machine. If I click on the Tableau Bridge icon and I hover over the name of the data source, you see this rotating icon here, which allows us to refresh the data source. So if I go ahead and click on that, this will actually run the data refresh. Now, at the moment I have my Tableau workbook open. So you might think, oh, maybe I'm doing some sort of trickery or who do in the background. What I'll do is after this run, I'll actually close Tableau so you can see that this is working without the workbook being open. But essentially what it's doing is it's secretly running. It's almost like a Tableau agent in the background. It's going off to get the Excel file from my location on the machine. It has this from the point when I publish the data source up. So it actually understands where this workbook is coming from and where the data source is. And then once this is finished, the data source will be fully refreshed, okay? And so just let, let this run and then we'll see that Tableau Online has updated this. The last time I run this, it took about a minute um, to do this because obviously it's running on my machine, then pushing something up to Tableau Online. 
And no doubt Tableau Online is, is, a, is a shared hosting system. So it takes a little while for things to, to get updated. So we'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, that's finished. Um, you can see that it's uh, no longer got the spinning icon. That take, took about a minute. And now if we go back onto Tableau Online, note the time here says 10.15. It should now say 10.21 or 10.20 if I refresh this page. So let's have a look at this. Moment of truth. There you go, it says 10.21, which is basically a minute ago. So now you can see that this is working. And what I can do now is I can go ahead and close my workbook because I've essentially published that up to the server. I don't need to save the workbook anymore. So now you can see Tableau is no longer open. And what I'm now gonna do is run the refresh again, just to give you some confidence that this is working as expected. Okay, there you go, that just took under a minute and now that's set up. So now we're looking for a timestamp of around 10.23. So let's go ahead and refresh this uh, website. And there you go, we have a timestamp of 10.23. So now you can see this has actually updated twice. Okay, I just wanna show you a couple more things. If we go to the site status tab, you'll actually see that we also get this report here called Bridge Extracts. And if I go ahead and click on that, you actually get this report which shows you the success rate of each of the refreshes of Tableau Bridge. So here you can see that it's run uh, a few times. There's actually, um, the average duration uh, for the refresh is about 40 seconds, uh, 42 seconds. So actually, before when it was taking a minute, we can sort of concur that the server itself took 42 seconds and the remaining uh, eight, eight minutes or so is essentially just network travel time, the time it takes for the data to get to Tableau and then Tableau to send a response back, okay? Now, the duration of extract refreshes went from a very short time to a very long time. This is, I think, purely just basically me setting it up for the first time. Here on the right, you can obviously see that I see two lines here, although it says the duration for the second one is 85 seconds. Well, I'm fairly certain it only took 45 seconds to a minute. So what's going on here? Well, <laughs> whenever you see something like this, the first thing I always check to see is what level of detail are we looking at? And here, if I actually expand the time, my hunch is that we've actually got two refreshes there. There we go, so 38 seconds and 47 seconds. If I just hit the plus one more time, make sure that it's as granular as it possibly can be, then there we go, we actually have the accurate time. So we've got slightly weird times here. I think this is basically because of the, the location of the of server and my machine. Um, but ultimately we can see that there's three separate um, configurations that have been set up there. So that's, that's working. You can obviously tweak these reports yourself. You can download them, um, connect back to Tableau Online. Or if you're running Tableau Server, you obviously wouldn't need to do this because you'd actually have a native access to your own Tableau server. Okay, so we've got to the bottom of that. That's good to know. Um, that's pretty much it from this particular page. If I go back to the site status tab and I go back to settings, then I go back to the bridge tab at the top, you can see that we have the remainder of these configurations. So obviously uh, we can allow load balancing, that's an option. If you wanna know more about how Tableau Bridge works, I highly recommend we go to the documentation. It doesn't make for great YouTube content. So I highly recommend you just go to Tableau Bridge, uh, KB, I just always search KB whenever I'm in doubt. Uh, and if I go ahead and just click the Tableau Bridge product page, um, it basically will explain to you how it works. So if I go to this page at the bottom, it gives you a rundown of how to install it. It also gives you some context about Tableau Bridge and how it works in terms of security. Yeah. So if I, so if I just scroll down here, you can see that the very last tab here on the left hand side is Bridge Security, and it goes into a little bit of detail about the authentication model how it works with on-premise data, things like CSVs, Excel files, and so on and so forth, how it works with cloud data sources where your data is actually, you know, inherently inside of your network or databases. Um, and it gives you a little bit of a rundown as to what you're gonna need to do in terms of proxy settings in your own environment to make sure that Tableau Online can work efficiently. So this is a nice, good resource if you're an admin and you need to find this, um, highly recommend it. I'll put a link to this in the description below. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. That's Tableau Bridge. I've shown you a very, very basic setup of how to do this. Um, the last thing to maybe highlight is you can run Tableau Bridge as an application, which is what I've configured it here, or you can run it as a service. And actually, when I click on that, you get this little notification to say, 
Switching to service mode runs live query and scheduled refresh activities as long as the computer is on, whether you're logged on to this computer or not. So essentially what's that saying is, look, as long as the computer's on, don't even have to be logged in. If it runs as a service, it's able to go and do its own thing. This is specifically, I guess, for people who want to run this um, on a machine in a virtual environment to just basically, you know, clunk away and do its own thing. Or you can actually just leave your laptop on, essentially going on holiday, just leave your laptop plugged in, make sure it doesn't go off, and just let your laptop sit there. And as long as uh, you've got access to the particular files that you need to, and that doesn't get taken away while you're on holiday, it should essentially just work the same way. So that's it. It's a little bit of a longer than normal video, um, but Tableau Bridges is a little bit of an involved setup. It's not quite like your desktop or, or, or server or online setup where it's mostly an application that we're working with. It's, uh, it's a little bit more complex. So it just takes a little bit longer. Okay. Now here you can see that when I click OK to go into service mode, it's asking me for my credentials for this computer. Now, I actually don't have any because this is a virtual environment on this particular machine. It's essentially running off my Mac. So this is gonna fail because I haven't really set this up correctly on my Parallels machine. But otherwise, if you were setting this up as a service, you'd go ahead, enter your credentials and essentially gives the access to do things on your behalf, even if you're not logged in. It's essentially just using your credentials in order to do that. But if I hit cancel there, it just goes back to application mode and everything is ready to work. Thank you for watching. It's a bit of a long one. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button. Uh, give me some feedback below if you haven't. It all counts as the same thing. And I'll catch you in the next video.